I have over 500 hours played in Monster Hunter World. Now watch me delete my old save file by mistake. Oh, a character re-edit option? Yes, please. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So because of this unfortunate turn of events, I had to resort to play through all of Monster Hunter World, including Iceborne, on a new save that I had only intended to play a couple of hours for for footage for this video. But you know what? I'm kind of glad that I did, because thanks to me being a dumbass and deleting weeks of my life, I've been able to re-experience Monster Hunter World as a sort of newbie veteran. And so naturally, that begs the following question. Was it worth it? And is Monster Hunter World as well as Iceborne worth playing through in 2024? Yes. Yes, it absolutely is. That's your answer. Oh, you wanted me to delve into why? Well, all right then. Strap in and let's go for a ride in the new world. Amazing, right? Yeah. All right, so the question of the day here, especially for newbies, is what is Monster Hunter World about? Well, to put it plainly, Monster Hunter World is about, well hunting monsters and so the protagonist in other words you arrive at a new continent called the new world specifically to hunt monsters i know what a complicated plot am i right to be perfectly frank the story and world isn't really mind-boggling and in general the plot acts as a simple background just in order to introduce new and cool monsters for you to fight that isn't to say that Monster Hunter World doesn't have some pretty cool moments otherwise, but you'll mostly be invested in other areas of the game. Those areas in particular being fighting monsters and crafting stuff. Now throughout your adventure exploring the new world, you'll be accompanied by the one and only Handler, or as the community likes to call her, Annoying. Come on, this way! <gasps> In rough terms, a handler essentially serves as your right-hand woman, providing you with everything you need throughout your hunts. And despite her being a complete buffoon and always in the way whenever monsters are nearby, she does serve her purpose well of guiding you through the game, at least in the first act. You'll also be accompanied by your personal palico, which is a type of cat person that acts as your little bodyguard. And yes, you can customize the cat. Perfect. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, Monster Hunter World isn't for the faint of heart. After facing off against the beginner monster, the Great Jagras, where you're taught the basics of combat, the game quickly starts kicking your ass afterwards. I remember my first time fighting against this first Tyrannosaur-like monster you'll be facing, the Anjaneth, and oh boy did this pink lizard with bad breath just completely demolish me. Now that isn't to say that you'll be playing just as badly as I did my first time, but just remember, it's okay to get absolutely annihilated in Monster Hunter World. Everyone who's played it knows it, and anyone who's pretending otherwise is just tryharding. Remember, getting blasted to hell is okay, because you know what, you can always try again. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Speaking of getting obliterated, one thing that stands out with Monster Hunter World, even to this day, is the fact that almost all monsters, well, at least the big monsters, are all fairly intelligent. During your encounter, you'll constantly be thrown, both figuratively and literally, for a loop because your opponents generally don't just stick to one type of moveset, but instead the AI will make sudden switches in the monster's tactics, and so you can never really completely read what a monster is about to do. Which, to me, is really impressive considering that this game released six years ago, and while there may be other games that have better AI, at least I can't think of any recent games that have some really intelligent AI. Well, except for Baldur's Gate 3, perhaps. In any case, monster fights rarely get too repetitive because most mid to end game monsters have some type of ace up their sleeves, so you'll almost always be challenged while playing World. As not only do monsters have moves that might one-shot you even if you have a high defense, but the gameplay in general is unforgiving as hell and some monsters aren't very generous when telegraphing their moves. Oh, you're suffering from some type of ailment that requires you to recuperate? Oh no you don't. That monster is coming right at you, so you better haul ass. Oh, you got knocked down and you're trying to dodge out of the monster's giant hitbox? <laughs> you can forget about that. Prepare to get smooshed. 
As you can see, Monster Hunter World is a game that has some extremely aggressive gameplay. And if I had to pick one game that I consider the most difficult game I've ever played, and I'm gonna be completely honest here, I'd say that Monster Hunter World, and specifically Iceborne, takes the cake any day of the week. Now some of you might be thinking of FromSoft games such as Dark Souls, Bloodborne, or Elden Ring here, but you know what? At least in those games, enemies don't take half an hour to almost an hour to kill. And another thing is that FromSoft are generally very generous with iframe timing, meaning you can roll through most attacks with some practice. Enemy attack patterns are also much more predictable, so as much as I love the previously mentioned games, Monster Hunter World is just an entirely different deal. But you want to know the real reason why I consider Monster Hunter World to be the most difficult game I've ever played? I never managed to beat the absolute final boss of the game. Not of the base game, mind you, I'm talking about Iceborne. Of course I'm not going to spoil the last fight in the game for you, but just know that the very last boss of the game will test you in every way imaginable, and you still might not come out on top. That's just the kind of game this is. However, if you're having too much trouble against a particular monster, you can always call in other players to help you out as the game has some pretty great co-op. And it's always a blast to play with other people and see them getting slapped about just as much as you do. Now, as I was writing this script, I almost forgot to mention the movement. Yes, I know, your hunter is clumsy and heavy. Every action takes at least one button press and sometimes even several seconds to complete, and you'll be thrown helplessly across the map more times than you care to count. But honestly, you get used to it, and if you play with a certain weapon long enough, you'll be controlling your hunter like they're an extension of yourself. Because you see, what's so cool about Monster Hunter is that you're mostly in total control of your actions. Mostly. Which also means that you have to think before committing to something, like reloading your bowgun or countering too early. Now speaking of difficulty, there are of course ways to make the game easier for yourself, and that's where crafting and gathering comes in. As an example, just like in Dark Souls and Elden Ring and games like that, there are iframes in Monster Hunter World as well. However, the timing window is much smaller than games like Elden Ring, and so in order to improve your chances of dodging through attacks, you can craft armors and insert augmentations into your gear to increase your iframe window. And for anyone not following, iframes stand for invincibility frames, which is when you dodge an attack at just the right moment and the enemy attack misses. Speaking of augmentations, there are tons and tons of abilities and perks you can customize yourself with, and it's all earned through exploring the various maps and carving up monsters you slay. There are skills that improve your chances of scoring a knockout on a monster, skills that make you eat foods and drink potions faster, skills that decrease the damage you take, and much, much more. Now this ties together with the end game of Monster Hunter World, because the true end game isn't actually killing the absolute final boss of the game. No. The true end game is finding every goddamn decoration there is in order to create the strongest possible build that will allow you to completely manhandle even the toughest of monsters. Now this, this is perhaps the only complaint I've ever had about Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter in general. It's just how goddamn grindy it is. Don't get me wrong, I love working for better armor, weapons and equipment and slaying monsters and just generally doing stuff, but farming for decorations is perhaps the single reason I've ever been burned out by this game. Now my problem with the decorations is that the real quality decorations you want, especially in Iceborne, are most effectively earned through killing tempered monsters, which are harder versions of monsters you've already fought or by melding, which is when you spend materials in exchange for decorations that are totally random. You see, because there are so very many decorations, finding the ones you need to reach your character's full potential can be extremely grueling because there is no guarantee whatsoever of what decoration you'll get at the end of a hunt or an event. In all honesty, if there's one thing I wish Capcom does in the future is maybe letting you select a decoration you want and then have you work for it by killing difficult monsters or some other kind of solution. Because as it stands, the decoration farming is by far my most disliked aspect of Monster Hunter World. And they're super important, especially if you want to be able to kill the last two bosses. But you know what, if there's one thing I can't get enough of, it's the incredible monsters and memorable map designs. Oh, and the armors, and especially the weapons. 
Monster Hunter World boasts a selection of 14 different weapon types with their own movesets, strengths, and weaknesses, and I love using all of them. My favorite as of today, though, has to be the bow. Once you've learned how to use it, there's nothing quite so satisfying as dancing around a big dangerous monster while peppering its face with arrow after arrow, taunting it with each little sting until it just can't take it anymore and just gives up. Oh, fuck. What Monster Hunter World and Iceborne has got going for it is just the incredibly unique type of game it is. It's huge, it's beautiful, it's unforgiving and brutal and so much fun. And you just can't help but get immersed into a completely different world when you sit down with this game. Because it will grab you by the balls and you like it. Hell, you'll even let it. That's how good Monster Hunter World and Iceborne are. And because of that reason, even if the price was suddenly jacked up to 60 bucks, I'd still buy it with no qualms whatsoever. Seasonal events are still ongoing and the Safi Jiva and Kulvi Taroth raids are on a bi-weekly basis. And because of a surge in popularity recently, you won't have much trouble finding groups to do content with. Now go get yourself this amazing one-of-a-kind game and get to hunting because Monster Hunter Wilds is next and if you want to hone your skills and preparation, then Monster Hunter World is the best place to start. Thank you for watching and have a great day.